some of the things that I really took away from the program that helped me out. Um, and it was, it's like a fraction of what you guys offer, but definitely the resume prep. Uh, my resume was a little longer. Being in tech, I like to, uh, I'm coming from a technical background, I like to list all the technology I had experience in. And uh, it, you guys really made me like rethink it. And um, I had to pull a little more from my military experience and leadership experience. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's been a really exciting month for us as we recently had candidates get placed at Sophos, Zoom Info, Okta, and now Elastic as SDRs. Today I'm speaking with Darren, who's former military and also had some DevOps engineering experience. He found it very challenging to package all of this and make it meaningful for tech companies. But I know throughout this conversation, you're gonna learn a lot from how he quickly applied what he learned in Tech Sales Ascension and just his life experience to really quickly make something happen. And not to mention, get into a market leading great company to really start your career in tech sales. I know you're gonna get a lot out of it. And Darren, thank you for your time. I got my start, I started in tech and I got my start in tech. Uh, I was in the military. I did network administration, um, got out of the military, and I ended up getting a job for a startup as a cloud engineer. Didn't really go that well. I was there for, for a couple months, and, you know, I started to realize, like, I, the friction I had, it wasn't because of the work. It was kind of like a, a people thing, like, you know, the way things were handled. I, I just didn't really feel, like, respected, you know? I think that was, like, the crack in the foundation. So I got another job uh, at a company and actually that job was, I feel like if, if this career, if, if the tech career field was for me, you know what I mean? Like it would have been perfect. You know, like every, the, 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 the culture was great. The people were great. Um, the job was fine. Like I had a lot to do, but you know, I just had the realization at some point, like, I don't think I want to be behind a screen for the rest of my career. And I think the stability of the job that I had and, you know, I've always been like a higher performer at whatever I've done. And so like they were giving me lots of affirmation, like trying to give me projects to keep me busy. And I was like, OK, like I can reasonably assume that I could do this for a long time. And like because I had that comfortability, I sat and thought, like, but do you want to do this? Like I didn't feel fulfilled. Um, it was almost I don't know how to explain it, but it just felt too stable like i was like this is too safe like you could do this forever and you could probably figure out what it would what your life would be like but you didn't take any risks man and um kind of that i felt like i wasn't really challenging myself enough and um going back to before my technical experience in the military i was actually on a component called the uh drill team it was in uh, it, it's a it's a component that goes around the world and they travel and they perform in front of people and you get a lot more social interaction and uh, you get to deal with like higher level leadership and you get to brief them and it's competitive too because it's like a 30 40 man team but only 12 people get to go on the trips sometimes only four you know, that was the environment where I came in and I was like the worst one there. And then I ended up like, you know, working hard and becoming like the lead person. Um, so I was on every trip and I enjoyed the competitiveness. I enjoyed, I enjoyed being in front of people and talking. And um, I didn't get any of that in tech. And I was, it was, it was a good path out of the military, um, but it's definitely not something that I wanted to do forever. And um, I think like, recently like almost like a couple months ago like i just sat and i thought and i was like man this isn't it this isn't it um as for an anecdote my uh my father he works in tech he works in um sales so i've always seen the career field growing up and um i've seen the success he's had he works in the, on the real estate side of things so recently during the pandemic you know he's had like crazy years and I'm watching like, wow, like he would say, I'm going to work on Saturdays for X amount of months because I want to get this. I'm like, dang, you can just drive your income like that. Like you, you can decide how much effort you're going to put in. And, you know, the output is, is income. And like, I can't do that. And I've always been like, he doesn't know, like competing with him. Like, I know how much money he makes. He knows how much money I make. And I'm like. You know, I want to be like, you know, it's, it's almost like an admiration thing. I'm like, I'm never catching up <laughs> at this at this rate. <laughs> so I was, I've yeah. seen what he, he's done and um, it's something that I admire. I've always admired and looked at sales um, in a positive light. So I wanted to give it a stab, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. 
and like when you're when you're there too, I imagine like as a DevOps engineer, you probably had a fairly comfortable salary, like you said, you know, not like a bad outcome by any means, but maybe not the the highest. Like when you're talking about that risk consideration, like it, are you? Did you really even care that you know now half you know roughly half of your salary is guaranteed, the other half you have to get, or like I don't know, just curious your thought your thoughts on that. Um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't. Like I was, I reached a level where I was like, initially I'm going to take a pay cut. That's okay, you know what I mean. In the grand scheme of things, you know, sometimes you take steps back, take a couple steps forward, and I was, I'm, I'm prepared for it. Um. The way I like to look at it, and it's probably a privileged way of looking, you know, being that I have a clearance and I've, I've gotten access to these jobs that are pretty decent paying. Where I was making is good money. But what I could be making is a little different. And sometimes you have to like risk, I feel like, you know, comfortable or uncomfortable. And, you know, there's growth in that and, and probably, you know, better results as well. And, I just wouldn't feel right knowing that. What if, what if you could, you know, do something a little better? And yeah, I was like, you know, I, forget the comfortable stuff, man. We'll see what happens. Roll the dice and and deal with it. You know. Yeah, I hope that was a good answer. And when you to the question, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. And and like when you're, you know, because like I, I know, like we were talking about before it started recording, like kind of how you would like to do things yourself. I'm very much the same way, probably to a fault, take on too much at times. You know, with a blessing and a curse. When you're looking to break in, like curious if you tried it kind of on your own before deciding to look for like a formal course and what ultimately went into that decision as well. Yeah, so I, I, I've been trying. I maybe so the first time I tried was when I got out the military about three, two years ago. Um, I was applying the roles and I had the thought, I was like, let me reach out to somebody who's in this role on LinkedIn, like a random guy. And I was like, let me ask him for advice. People are typically nicer than vets. So I was like, let me see if I could, you know, use that angle into his inbox. And what he told me was, you need technical experience because the, the the role I was going for was solutions engineer initially. Um, so I was like, okay, I can do that. So I sat down and I got my technical experience. And then, you know, recently I, um, I started applying to roles and I wasn't getting much traction. I was like, I know that you can get a sales role. I know this is entry level role. There's something I'm doing wrong. And, you know, like we discussed, like I tried it on my own. I was like, okay, Darren, you need some help. So I uh, went on YouTube, I found your channel and I was watching some, some content and I really liked it. And I was able to pull some meaningful insights from there. And then I saw that you guys had a course and I was like, okay, I mean, it's definitely worth the money. Like this is literally somebody in a position where I want to be in explaining how to get there, it's like a no brainer, you know, at some point I'm like, okay, you can't do it yourself. Let's figure out how the professionals do it. And it, it worked out. Yeah. No, and obviously super excited, like landing at a great company, like Elastic. And like, I will say to your credit too, it's like, we were talking about this as well. Like you didn't show up to a live call. So in, in, a, in a way you did do it yourself, you know, it was amazing to see, like just hit me up out of nowhere, month and a half, two months later that you got this awesome job. Would love to, you know, for folks watching, like, you, I, I'm sure you had a couple threads going with different companies. You ultimately choose Elastic in a federal SDR position, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what kind of went into that decision? How was the overall experience? And and maybe just paint that picture for everyone watching. Um. So I had sent a lot of applications out there and I actually didn't get too much traction. I got traction with Elastic and with a, with a, with a startup. And uh, initially, I went through the interview process with the startup, and it went, I guess, about as well as it can go without actually getting the job. You know, they were impressed with, like, the answers I had to the interview questions, and I got to the very last interview, and they pretty much told me the reason why I might not get hired. Like, the, the hiring manager, she was like, I would love to have you on my team. Like, she was the, um, not the hiring manager, the, the manager of the uh sdrs she was like i would love to have you on my team but our higher up is looking for people with experience to hit the ground running and i guess it makes sense with a startup um they don't have the the uh the training investment like like an established company would 
And I sat on that for a while. I was a little hurt by it, but um, I still had the opportunity with Elastic and, and they hit me up for interviews. That's wrong. I actually had um, interviews with MongoDB as well. And they were based in um, they were based in in Austin, and they didn't offer relocation, so I couldn't get out there. I would have loved to, but um, the Elastic one just kind of worked out. It was a position I have actually some connections that worked there, some that I made, and then an old supervisor from the military that worked there, and I asked them about it, and it was not a federal position at first. I waited too long and I, I missed out on the application for the, the regular SDR role and then the federal role opened up and I just applied and I reached out to the connection I had made a couple months prior um, and I asked for a referral. And that's another tip you guys had is like, you know, warm up the the, the connections you make. And, you know, the, the longer that you continue to interact with them and have conversations, the more likely they'll be able to they'll want to do something for you as opposed to like hitting them up out the blue and like, Hey, can you refer me a complete stranger? So yeah, um, I interviewed with them. It was about four rounds. Every round went really well. Everybody was pretty excited through the process and it's not like I had a bunch of companies to choose from, but I was still happy, happy with the, with the offer. And, and I, I reached out to you to make sure things were, were looking good and didn't hesitate. Yeah. No, and a great decision. I think you'll see how many doors open up getting into a brand like that. And I know they invest a ton in their SDRs as well. So obviously continuing education there, like you're going to be in a great spot. Overall, I know it's like a huge question, so I'll try and, you know, narrow it in. But in terms of just throughout the entire process, maybe one or two takeaways for anyone watching that's trying to break in. I'd be curious, you know, maybe the most prominent pieces of advice that, that come to mind. Um. Yeah, sure. So I think for my case, and probably, you know, it's probably helpful to, to everyone, but definitely reaching out to people on LinkedIn. Um, I I don't want to say I was not spamming people, but I literally would search the company and the position and I had almost a template and I would just swap out the names and I was reaching out of like, People will probably talk about me in the company. Like I was almost like, <laughs> like everybody on the list. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Here's my story. And just a quick little blurb to try to get some connections up. Um, you guys also mentioned getting your connections up and having more of a LinkedIn profile so you don't kind of look like a bot. Um, I believe all those things really helped out because ultimately what got me the role was the referral. You know, I, I have a bunch of applications that are still open. I guess they'll get to it eventually, but you know, without the referral, it's almost like you're just a number. And I think for me, the most important part was having someone help me get into the door. Um, uh, aside from that, I want to say the resume, the resume tips helped and the interview prep. That's that's also actually that's probably the second most important piece is the interview prep. You guys had a list of questions that are likely to be asked and also questions that you should ask. And I, and I think that was also like super important. Um, beforehand, I had not really been one to ask questions during an interview. And I think that comes off as you're not really interested or you haven't done research on the company. And I think being able to have that back and forth conversation with whoever's interviewing you kind of lets them know that you're serious about it and you prepared for it. And it, it definitely gives you a, a foot forward. Um, but those are the two most important things that you guys taught me that I was able to pull away. Definitely um, reaching out to people who are in the position you want to be in. And um, what was the second one? Um, <laughs> interview questions, right? <laughs> Interview questions, man. Interview questions. Those yeah. things Those things definitely made the difference. Yeah, it's great to hear. Uh, well, Darren, I uh, appreciate the advice. And yeah, really excited to see where Elastic takes you. But any other thoughts before we sign off? Um. No, man, that, that, that's everything. That's everything. That's all I've got. Uh, I definitely appreciate what you guys have put together and I'll try to be a little more active in the community to help out where I can. Like I'm always available. Um, somebody wants to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Like I, I love to help out where I can. You know, I'll, I'll always give the caveat. I can only tell you how to get as far as I've gotten, but whatever I, wherever I can help, I'd love to help for anyone for sure.